measuring the levels of liquefied gaseous systems. I recently attended a fantastic presentation at the Reefer event and a presenter gave a great insight into methods for measuring the levels of liquefied gaseous systems. Now we in the fire industry tend to treat high pressure gas systems that are stored in server rooms as solid pieces of material and once they've been installed they do not need to be looked at as they're not moving. They only need the annual maintenance every year. Now they do have pressure gauges on them but how reliable are they? If you hold something in a strained position for a period of time then it's probable that it may stay in that position even if the pressure does change. That is why they use vacuum gauges on fire extinguishers on annual inspections to ensure the gauge does move freely. They have to put a pressure gauge, they put a vacuum gauge on it to ensure that it is actually moving, it hasn't stuck in that position. So you could argue that a gauge saying it's full does not necessarily mean it is. Now people tend to look at pressurised systems as inactive systems, whereas actually by their very nature they are active ones. This means that you should consider monitoring these systems to ensure that they will perform as expected if required. For example, a ship can have up to 645 kilogram cylinders on board. How do you ensure these cylinders are full? Well, the only true way to measure a liquefied gas is to weigh the cylinder. That is why a CO2 cylinder does not have a pressure gauge on it. When you pressurise CO2 to 56 bar, it liquefies, and that is because it's below its critical temperature. That's the difference between a gas and a vapour. A gas, a true gas, cannot be liquefied at normal atmospheric temperatures by pressure alone, whereas vapours can. Gases need cooling first. So if you pressurise CO2 to 56 bar it liquefies and they do this to get more in for obvious reasons. Now if there was a pressure gauge on the CO2 cylinder what would it read? Well it would say 56 bar. Right then you set it off for say 5 seconds and you discharge some of the CO2. What would the gauge read now? Well it would still say 56 bar and it would until you'd used up all the liquid CO2 and then it would suddenly go from 56 to 0. That's why you don't find gauges on a CO2 fire extinguisher. So this is not, when it's liquefied gases it doesn't actually tell you how much is in there. And this is the same with liquefied gases. The pressure above the liquid does not indicate how much agent is in the cylinder. The only way to do it is weigh it and that's what we've been doing for years and I've done it myself in the fire service. And if the weight is down then you know that some of the agent has been discharged. Now can you imagine trying to weigh all those cylinders in a ship or indeed in any server room? It would take a considerable amount of time. It could say take up to 10 to 15 minutes per cylinder to shut down the system dismantle, weigh the cylinder, put it back in. So how can a servicing company do this? Well it's unlikely they do check all the cylinders. It's more likely that they will do a sample of the cylinders and then issue a certificate and put a sticker on the cylinders. When you look at the role of many of these gaseous fire suppression systems, well they have an implication on life safety. Although a lot of them are for property protection they do have an implication on life safety and therefore it is critical that they will work when required. Indeed a lot of the stakeholders will want to feel confident that the system will operate as designed in the remote chance of a fire occurring. Now if I had a glass of wine in my hand, which is quite usual, then this will be static. It's at a pressure of one atmosphere or 14 and a half pounds per square inch. Whereas a gaseous fixed suppression system is sitting at about 720 pounds per square inch. That's the pressure inside a cylinder. Now that is an incredible amount of pressure. And the regulations say that these don't need testing until every 10 years. But how do you know the cylinder's not corroding inside or it's damaged? Now the most critical point of a cylinder is the cylinder neck. This is where any weak points are likely to be. 
However, some countries insist that they hang them by the neck to wear them. So that's not necessarily a good idea, but that's what they do to wear them. And that's the weak point. These systems do need monitoring, just like any other system, like a fire alarm system. So how can you check the level of a liquefied gaseous system without having to weigh it? Well, a company called Coltraco has mastered an ingenious method using ultrasonic sound. Now, these can be portable or fixed monitoring systems. Now, the Port 11 Max, which is a portable system, is an ultrasonic liquid level indicator. It was designed primarily for determining the contents of a CO2 cylinder, but it can be applied to other cylinders containing liquids, namely fire suppression cylinders under pressure. The Porter Level Max works by transmitting an ultrasonic signal into the container and then analysing the return signal. It does this by determining whether the signal has passed through a liquid or a gas. Now, ultrasonic sound travels much quicker through a liquid than it can in air, and that's why dolphins, for example, can communicate over such long distances. Now, this principle can be used to determine whether it is travelling through the liquid in the cylinder or the gas in the cylinder, and therefore you can work out what the liquid level is. Now, there is also a facility for testing rusted or thick cylinders if this is required. All they do is increase the output of the signal and the sensitivity of the resulting signal. Now, this ultrasonic sound technology can also be used to test the integrity of a room. In other words, will the room hold the gaseous agent or has it got leaks? Now, the old way of testing rooms was to fill it with smoke. Not a very good system. The modern way is using ultrasonic technology. They do this by transmitting a sound in a room and then they put sensors on the outside listening for leaks or they can do it the other way around. Utilising ultrasonic sound to measure the contents of a liquefied gaseous system is a very innovative system and it's offered major benefits in the field of fire safety. Indeed, these systems are used in the London Underground who have a very active and forward-looking approach to fire safety. So this is a new innovation that you should be aware of.